I want my gentle criminal versus Mr. Compress fight. I want Stain to train Deku. Uh, my, yeah, I'm getting... <laughs> all right, all right, all right. <laughs> What is up, y'all? This is the Ghost of Gains, your go-to source for all things gaming, anime, fitness, and streaming. And in today's video, we're going to be talking about the newest My Hero Academia season that I've been on top of more than anything. Um, I mean, it's really been like My Hero, Chainsaw Man, and kind of Blue Lock. I kind of need to get back into that a little bit. But the reason why I've been so on point with keeping up with My Hero Academia is that I remember about two years ago, it was in the pandemic, and I had nothing else to do. And I knew that I had just finished up the overhaul arc it was right yeah <laughs> the overhaul arc in my hero academia and my hero youtube does it again the freaking spoiler thumbnails were rampant i was seeing white hair shigaraki in thumbnails when we'd never seen him before and it just had me curious like how like what the hell's going on in the <laughs> what's going on in the manga man you know so what i did was i succumbed I was an anime only, and I succumbed to reading the manga, and I am so glad that I did, because I read the My Villain Academia arc, which, in my opinion, was way better in the manga, but the anime did what it could. I honestly wish they, they would have done better, but then it came to the war arc which is what we just finished up and now we're kind of getting into the dark deku arc now the thing is is that i read up until the end of the war arc for the manga and i have not read it since then <laughs> so um everything from now forward is completely new to me pretty much you know i've seen certain screenshots of some things but honestly everything's pretty much new at this point i read the war arc i loved it it was unbelievable i remember it was a summer day during the covid pandemic and i basically read the whole war arc in one day <laughs> i read it was like chapter 2 239 or something up until like 300 280 and i read it all in one day and it was unbelievable the suspense the characters and everything and here's the thing is that a lot of people have had certain complaints about the war arc which i think are well founded um so the war arc was very very good i think that they uh, adapted it well i thought it, they adapted it pretty fast honestly i thought that the war arc was going to be the entire season the whole 24 episodes you know so i was actually pretty surprised that they're even fitting in this dark deku arc now like with the next 12 episodes so I think that the pacing was fast, but it kind of worked. It wasn't like My Villain Academia bad, but I do think there were some moments in the war arc that I think could have hit a little better. Um, this isn't really a, a video knocking the season or whatever, but just a couple of things is that I wish that Twice's death was a little bit more impactful i know that's a little bit controversial because i thought it was a good scene but i just thought that it happened very fast and i didn't i don't think you could really see what happened <laughs> like i remember in the manga it was pretty clear what happened to twice in hawks stabbing him in the back and stuff but i feel like in the anime it was a little hard to tell what happened you know i was watching this with my sister and she was also a little bit confused at first as to what happened to twice and just the whole the whole kind of dubiousness of it a little bit i thought it was really good i thought the soundtrack was fantastic but yeah i thought it was a little bit fast for my liking and i guess i don't know maybe that's just me though i had a different expectation of it that maybe i'm a little bit selfish about but you know i kind of wish they played light of hope or something that soundtrack that all my plays when he beats all for one to play it um, but that's just me being a fanboy. And yeah, the, I know the animation got a little bit knocked for the war arc. I do gotta agree with the Deku versus Shigaraki fight up in the air. Especially when there's been fan animations. Like if you go on Mad Iron Animation, who's a fantastic fan animator, he really kind of 
kind of out animates <laughs> Bones a little bit in terms of the frames, uh, the motions, just the choreography of the fight too. It wasn't necessarily bad, but I think for being one of the biggest fights of the series, I think it should have gotten that Deku versus Overhaul treatment a little bit, you know? So, but other than that, I mean, this is more of a positive video about my hero. I know I still got shit to complain about all the time, but you know, for the most part, off the top of my head, that's really all I had to say about that. But what I'm really, really excited about now is this dark Deku arc that I don't really know what it is or what it entails i'm getting like a batman vibe from it you know what i'm getting a vibe from is if you guys play the marvel spider-man game um this is a spoiler for it by the way so if you haven't played it yet um i'll maybe put a little thing down below to skip to but basically when spider-man gets teamed up by the sinister six and the whole city like new york city goes into rain and it's like there's fires all over the place and stuff and it's just in complete ruin that's what this vibe gives me it's like a total hellish hell it is a just underground underworld level society that they have now and deku does not look happy deku i what i would compare deku now is to Korra, right after she fights Zaheer in The Legend of Korra, she kind of goes through that depressive episode, and she kind of goes on her own, and she doesn't want to do anything with anybody, and she's depressed, and she's anxious, and she's affected negatively from what just happened. And honestly, I think that's one of my favorite things about this season, and I was talking about it with my sister, is how good they did the real effects of an aftermath of a war like this. There's people stuck under rubble. There's, you know, speculation about heroes and their utility and their usefulness. It's like, whoa, you know, like, are heroes as good as we thought they were? and a changing perspective on the villains too and the fact that the day hasn't really been saved <laughs> the the master villain got away shigaraki freaking all for all for rocky all for shigaraki got away so it kind of lends itself to this is like kind of crazy right now and honestly when i finished at this point in the manga i didn't even know where the manga was gonna go from here i was i was kind of thinking to myself like this seems like some endgame level stuff. Like, how do you even go back to anything normal from here? How do you do a sports festival? How do you do a, a festival arc, you know? So I was honestly really confused when I was reading this and when I finished reading it, where the manga was gonna go. So I'm very, very excited to see a jailbreak arc is what it looks like. And I will say that seeing some of those old villains like Kai Chisaki stain muscular again is unbelievable. It reminds me of like what they do in the Spider-Man comics sometimes when all the villains get let loose or even in Arkham Asylum. That's what it gives me. It gives me a Batman Arkham Asylum vibe um, just with the villains getting out and you don't know where they are now. You don't know who's going to take them on. So. It lends itself up to a huge load of opportunity, and I, I, I have many theories. I have many expectations. I want my gentle criminal versus Mr. Compress fight. I want Stain to train Deku. Oh my god, yeah, I'm getting. All right, all right, all right. Maybe that stuff won't happen. Don't spoil it for me, but I just have some crazy ideas about the potential for where this arc seems to be going, and I'm really happy with where it's going. I love the downtroddenness. I love that Deku seems to be, at least based on the opening, it seems like he's lost hope, you know? Or he's just gonna be that main asset that the heroes need uh, to get back on their feet, but is his mental health okay? Is his mental state okay? So these are some answers that we're gonna have to look forward to, and yeah, that's really all I have to say. I'm really excited for it. I love where this arc is going. I love the darker tone. The war arc was good. Um, it wasn't completely uh, flawless. It definitely had some things it could have done better. I don't really know what goes on at Studio Bones or whatever, but um, there's always a multitude of things of why things don't get animated as well or what it may be, but it seems like 
honestly, this arc might get a little bit better animation. That's my prediction. I think that they're holding out on some god tier animation here. You know, animation isn't everything, but I can understand for some big parts why you would want it a little bit, you know, more. But yeah, honestly, I'm not going to ramble on for too long, but let me know what you guys think. Let me know in the comments what are some theories you have for this Dark Deku, Rogue Deku arc that we're going to be getting. Do you think some villains are going to go to the good side? Do you think some heroes might, you know, double think a little bit? Maybe, you know double check themselves in terms of their role here do you think society is going to be going towards uh where the heroes want or where the villains want let me know in the comments below and if you enjoyed this video and if you enjoy my other stuff consider subscribing to the channel like share channel <laughs> channel and then like share whatever you want to do and all my socials will be in the link. Uh, I'm on Twitch. We have a lot of fun over there with variety games um, and fitness streams. I usually like to stream my workouts. And I'm on TikTok, Twitter, Instagram, all that stuff. All right? But thank you guys again for watching. And I'll see you in the next one. Go Plus Ultra.